here is the Luke clutch um, that I'm going to put in. And my understanding is this is a zero mile unit, uh, but it has sat around a little while. And you can see right here, there's some surface rust on the actual uh, flywheel. And then you can see little rust spots on the on the disc here. This is where it was actually sitting up against the pressure plate and the flywheel. And then over here, this is the pressure plate and same, <clears throat> you have rust. I left, I left a portion of this untouched. But the other part of this and the other part of the actual flywheel, you can see it really good right there. Um, I actually just took this wire brush too. And uh, basically I was going with, with the grain right here. It has like pretty obvious draw marker where it was machining, machined. It has like grooves in it. So just to show you how bad it was, that's, that's about what it was and that's about what it was too. So I'm gonna finish cleaning that up and then I'll probably take some like Scotch-Brite uh, to the face of this to kind of knock off the, the big pieces and then we'll get ready to put it actually on the car. Okay, so before I put this clutch on, I got everything cleaned up. Uh, I'm gonna check and make sure that this is actually set and ready to be put on. I think it is. You can see these springs are pretty well compressed. Um, if they were extended, that would mean it was near the end of its life, but obviously it's brand new. Um, there shouldn't be an issue, but it was installed before that, and this one spring is sitting in there a little goofy. So what I'm going to do is the process of resetting this clutch. And basically you would have to do this if you say I was gonna use that high mileage clutch and throw it back on here, I would wanna reset it before I do that. And basically as soon as you go to install them, this one was installed, it basically unsets them or you know, it, it, can't, it needs to be reset. So um, what I've done so far is I just took some um, nuts right here and I went underneath the just the outer rim not the actual pressure plate just the case for the pressure plate and then I put just sheetrock screws and a little washer on there so this thing is like bolted to the table it's sitting down really good and there's a gap underneath it now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this big lag bolt into the table I don't care about and run this sucker all the way through it and then also I'm going to use this timing gear, um, or uh, not timing gear, this is a crank sprocket. And I'm going to use this as kind of like my um, throw out bearing. I don't know which direction I'm going to go with. This might work better, but anyway, it's about the right diameter that I can put this on here and push down on here just like the throw out bearing uh, would. And when you press on the clutch, and so that will um, push these fingers in and lift the uh, pressure plate up even more than it already is. It'll be kind of a back and forth deal. Once we get to the right height, this thing will free up and I can set that where I want it to be and then release off of it. So anyway, I'm gonna try it, see how it goes and uh, see if these little uh, pieces here work for me. Alright, so now I think you have a better better view here, but um, basically this disc is now freed up in here. And this this one's all metal, so it's not a, not a big deal, but you can see how when you push that, that spring compresses right there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold pressure right here, hold this spring compressed with the screwdriver blade, and then I'm going to go ahead and uh, undo the bolt, and it should just set there or near there. There we go. So now these springs are all tight right here and you know, this is all loose right here. And so uh, that that's what you're going for. That's how you know it's set. Um, an example of one that's kind of worn out would be that one right there. You can see how the, the springs are extended a little bit that had some miles on it. It wasn't worn out by any means, but this one here is, is fully, fully reset. So now we can actually go ahead and put it up um, like a normal clutch. All right, so the first piece we're gonna put up here is the flywheel. <clears throat> and this is a dual mass flywheel. You can see it has like a sprung hub inside there. So when you actually like dump the clutch or when it grabs really hard, it'll actually work up against those uh, springs. And that helps to reduce the shock on the engine, first of all, and the drivetrain between them. And then also uh, it makes it easier to drive. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get this put up here 
the bolt holes here actually go through into the engine. So they're, they're through holes, they're not blind holes. Some, some cars come with blind holes so that you don't ever have to even do this. Um, but in this instance, that goes all the way through and on the back side is oil. So what you wanna do here is take some blue Loctite and put that on the um, threads of these bolts and that'll seal it and keep any oil from seeping out and ruining your clutch and your flywheel. Here are my used uh, flywheel bolts. Obviously, uh, it's general knowledge that you're supposed to use new flywheel bolts, but I'm not going to wait for those to come in. I'd be pretty shocked if uh, 170 horsepower found a way to break these, but uh, if that's the case, uh, that'll be a happy day. So first thing, go ahead and put the flywheel up here. So I'm using a blue thread locker, that's what was recommended. And uh, also because you just never know when this thing will come out. All right, so after making kind of a mess with the Loctite here, I kind of figured out that although those look like a nice even six bolt pattern, they're not. Uh, they're, it is uh, only works one way. That bolt pattern has to be on there just so, and so I just rotated it around until it worked and then uh, started on my bolts. So uh, just make sure you watch out for that. These flywheel bolts need to be torqued down to 83 foot pounds. I'm not exceptionally proud of what I've done here, but um, it worked. I basically took a, um, a ratchet strap, one of these crappy ones, and just hooked it right there so that that'll keep, uh, keep the flywheel from turning while I'm torquing it. And then I just kind of looped it around and hooked it on that mount right there so I could get good tension on it. And uh, that seems to have worked uh, just fine. So I only have two more to do and uh, just got to reposition things a little bit. All right, with all that grunting done, <laughs> I can go ahead and clean this off one last time, make sure there's no fingerprints or anything else that's on here, just kind of like a, a brake rotor. You want to make sure it's actually clean. All right, same deal. You want to clean off the, the face of the pressure plate as well, make sure it doesn't have any hand, uh, fingerprints on it or anything. Now the actual disc goes up. Um, it has a uh, like a protruding hub on the inside and uh, the outside doesn't. It also says flywheel side there, so that's how you know. Take that, put him up. And the pressure plate goes up too. Just like that. I just stuck this jack handle in here and it fits pretty snug, it's not perfect. But then I was using this hammer and tapping in different directions to move the clutch disc around inside there so that it's centered with the input shaft. Um, normally that would be done with a clutch alignment tool, but I don't have one nor can I find one. And I'm told that you don't even need one because it doesn't have a pilot bearing, so that's great. But still, you're gonna want that centered because if you don't have that centered, you're, you're gonna miss your dowels and, and your two locating dowels, it's gonna fight you. So you don't wanna clamp that all down. So I got it very, very close. And uh, to which now I'm gonna start easing these bolts in just a little bit at, at a time, very evenly torquing them down. Forward service manual calls out 21 foot pounds, um, but this is a loop clutch, so I don't know. Close enough. All right, well that clutch is on there now. Um, you can see everything looks uh, about like it should. And uh, I'm excited to actually use this thing, see what it feels like. I've never even had a vehicle with a brand new clutch before. We'll see how it turns out. I hoisted up this uh, transmission. <clears throat> this is the original transmission for the car. Uh, I have no reason to suspect that there'd be any problem with this transmission. I'm not crazy about the fact that this is all kind of gooped up with oil or maybe the transmission's leaking a little bit. I just don't know. Uh, but this one is 100% unknown and I don't know anything about it whatsoever. So I just didn't really trust that one. And so I'm gonna go with uh, this transmission I think instead there really isn't a whole lot to mounting this up You just got to put the little spacer shim on the inside here, and that's uh, this set right here There's that little set of, of steel pieces 
I have another set for this transmission. So you have to get that bolted up and that spaces this out um, just enough. The throw out bearing feels nice and smooth. Um, there's no sandiness or roughness there, so that's okay too. Again, I'm just gonna kinda send it and see how it works. I have uh, really no knowledge of it other than it was in the car and the car apparently ran, minus the, <laughs> the known bad bearing. So we're gonna slap this thing together and uh, be one step further. All right, so uh, things got a little wild in here a little bit. This transmission was looking extra bad. So I covered it in brake cleaner and parts washing fluid and got it pretty cleaned up. I spilled a bunch of transmission fluid and here's where I did it. So I made a huge mess here, but we're gonna get it cleaned up and I'm wearing my respirator so I don't uh, time travel with the, uh, with the brake clean. Before I forget, I uh, made a point to get these uh, shims installed. You can see how they fit behind the flywheel there. There's a little uh, plastic barbed fastener that holds that in there, and then also same here for the top piece. And then that kind of keeps it in place, so once it's on there, you almost forget it's there. I'm gonna put an extremely light amount of grease on these splines, just so that uh, they remain uh, mostly rust-free and hopefully go in there nice and easy. All right, well, little by little, I kind of got this whole transmission and engine put together. Um, I've had success doing this before, but basically what you do is you start with like a longer bolt that'll just kind of put you in the right position and then try and get a couple other longer bolts going, get them at least started. So as you run the transmission up to meet the engine, the actual uh, clutch disc has a spline in it. So you got to get that sorted and you can't just go hauling off and, and hitting these bolts and tightening them all up. But what I do is I get it kind of close where it's starting to kind of maybe st start to bind up or, or kind of, you know, bite or whatever right before then. Then I'll go to the front on the balancer and I'll just turn the motor over. And, you know, a lot of times the spinning clutch disc and the input shaft of the transmission that's not moving, um, hopefully you've left it loose enough and they'll just kind of like slop together and get started on each other because they're kind of rounded off the end of the splines. And so then once you think that's engaged, then you can kind of just jostle this whole kit and it'll kind of like you just kind of rock it all back and forth and it'll eventually just like kind of come together you'll gain a few threads tighten up a little more jostle it some more gain a few more threads and so on and so forth and it really starts to agree with you um quite nicely so i have this one tightened up and i got this one tightened up and i i tightened them up like all the way just to see how it would sit and it sits fine everything is agreeable I can still rotate it over I don't have like a bunch of killer thrust going on if, if all of a sudden you can't turn the engine over then that means you're putting a bunch of thrust on the crankshaft you're pushing on the back of the crankshaft and it's like binding it up that's a big no-no especially on a brand new engine so um, everything seems happy here um, what I'm actually going to do now is I'm going to back these off just a little bit so I have a little wiggle room again and then I'll get all these bolts started. I'll get every one of these bolts started. Then we can go about actually tightening it and uh, getting it set for good. But uh, that's that's the procedure that I use. Um, I don't know if that's the best way, but for one person, uh, that seems to work okay. Uh, if you had a couple guys here, you could really manhandle it, but uh, just me, you know, I, I only have so much wingspan, so uh, that, that works out kind of okay for me. All right, so I got all these bolts started and they're all, you know, close within a couple threads. So now I'm gonna go and torque them down uh, 35 foot pounds. Well, I forgot to put in the crank position sensor, I believe that is, which goes right here. And sadly enough, it has a bolt that, that uh, screws in from the inside. So I have to take the transmission off again to put that sensor, the little housing in, and then the sensor in, because the bolt is like back in there. So that sucks to see, but whatever. I'm used to doing things twice because I forget stuff and 
you know, it's my first time doing this, so uh, we'll uh, do that now. All right, so this is the sensor that I uh, forgot. This housing actually specifically is what I forgot. You don't need to put the sensor in, just the housing. But I forgot to put that in, and so I knew the transmission had to come off, but also the flywheel had to come, and clutch had to come off. So yeah, that's annoying. I'll have to do this again, but uh, I won't bore you with any of that. Big bummer. All right, well that was a terrible experience having to redo this again. Uh, took the transmission off and actually had to take the flywheel off and uh, got down to get this sensor. So don't make the same mistake that I did. Get that, at least the housing, in there beforehand. And so now hopefully we're okay. Um, I have a few of these issues where the bolts that I have are like too long and I don't really know where they went exactly. I have mismatched kind of garbage because that's just the way I received the car. So I'm not really sure, but ultimately I think it's gonna hold up there and you know, it'll be fine. So uh, that's what we have going on. All the bolts are torqued down uh, as they should be. And uh, now we can finally get the starter on there um, and get this thing packaged up to maybe go in the car. So I'm getting, getting kind of excited because it's, it's getting close here.